thanks everybody for uh, for attending and for registering tonight. And um, thank you to the four coaches for putting together a presentation this evening for our uh, uh, third installment of the next level for our U15 AAA coaches. Um, uh, I've had some really good feedback from some families on these. It's just been a really good, um, informative uh, process for people to learn about our uh, all the great work that our clubs have been doing and all the great work that the coaches and the staffs have uh, put together um, to execute a lot of our programming. So um, thank you again for attending. Uh, we just ask that you'd uh, mute your microphone if possible. Uh, I did receive all the questions from everybody, and I think looking through the and communicating with the coaches on the presentations, a lot of your questions are going to be answered when each coach presents. Um, and I will just present something uh, briefly before the, the coaches go, just in regards to our high performance programming uh, framework that we've got within the city now. So uh, before we start, and just let everybody know that we, we, will re we are recording this, sorry. Um, and then we will post once uh, it's quickly edited. So um, if you want to come back to it again, or if you have a friend that wasn't able to attend, we will have it available for you after. Um, and next thing I just wanted to introduce our general manager with Hockey Edmonton, uh, Steve Hogel. Um, Steve joined us uh, a number of months ago and has uh, done a great job and made a big impact since arriving here with, uh, with our organization. And uh, just wanted to introduce Steve and give him a few minutes to speak. Thanks, Steve. Thanks so much, Joel. I'll keep this short and sweet. Uh, thanks to the coaches, uh, not only for tonight, but for all they've done uh, over the years for, for our members, our players, uh, and uh, big props to all the people joining us tonight. And uh, I think it's just critical to, to uh, come, learn, ask questions. Uh, Joel mentioned he's got questions uh, locked and loaded and uh, any other questions, obviously, you can toss them in the chat. Um, just so you're fully informed and can make a great, great decision. And I've been so impressed with uh, the way Joel has worked with the coaches and taken our development program to a new level. And uh, I get excited on nights like this because I get uh, Jack listening to the coaches and I want to get to the rinks and, and watch them and the players in action. So uh, uh, just a real brief snippet about me. Joel mentioned I had joined uh, Hockey Edmonton a few months ago. I'd come back from Saskatoon about a year ago. Um, I was out there helping run the Saskatoon Blades and uh, spent six years out there and absolutely loved it. So um, really do have a, a great love for the game and, and uh, uh, the players who play it. And uh, I still enjoy playing myself and uh, uh, it's certainly a sport for life. And obviously uh, we've got some great high end players too, taking it to next levels with coaches like this. And uh, with our technical coordinator, Joel. So um, really short and sweet, but thanks again for being here, everybody, and look forward to the night. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen here quickly. Um, can you guys see that? Okay. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so uh, Hockey Edmonton, along with the EHMC and then some advisors from athletic clubs have put a little bit of work into our development programming and just kind of again building a framework that will uh, be supportive of our coaches and their execution of their season programming so um, we piloted this last year with our u18 AAA coaches i know some of them are on the call and uh, they did an amazing job last year and the year before executing this this program um, and as you look through some of the presentations that we have with the coaches tonight um, they've already covered a lot of this um, and, and, and we'll continue to use this framework uh, moving forward within their programming. But again, it's just a resource to families and to coaches and to um, put together a development framework that encompasses all the really important components that are necessary for an elite athlete to uh, succeed here in, in Edmonton. And I think the, the resources and the time that we put into this is substantial and I think you know compared to a lot of the other options and there's lots of options out there for players this one here uh, in accompaniment with the coaches and the other support that their athletes will provide will just show everybody how amazing of a, of a place that club hockey can be for players so uh, with our hockey program framework we've divided it into four pillars um, there's physical mental technical and life skills um, and then these four pillars um, were built off the Hockey Canada, four pillars of player development. And we feel within these four pillars, we can kind of cover off 
um, a lot of the uh, components, again, that are necessary for, for athletes to succeed. And again, we recognize that hockey is not just on ice practices anymore. It's become so much more than that. It's become their off ice workouts, nutrition, the, the mental skills that they're getting, the life skills with all their community service. And um, we breeze through the uh, social media of a lot of the coaches, we, we uh, especially during this COVID time, um, the awesome things they've done over Zoom and the things they were able to do when they were together, they've really covered off a lot of this. But uh, again, we'll just briefly go through this for a couple minutes before we start off with our coaches. But again, this, this physical pillar here, um, this again for the U15 AAA level, um, we're again looking to have some informative sessions for both players and families just to understand the importance of nutrition, hydration, sleep, workouts. And again, you can put in a ton of work, whether it be on ice and off ice. And if you're not um, supporting yourself with strong nutrition, hydration, sleep, all those uh, um, different aspects, no matter how hard you work, it's just going to be difficult. So again, want to put an emphasis on that and I put an emphasis on our team workouts. So um, again, those 20 mandatory workout sessions and then two player and family um, information sessions are going to be really vital to, to our success next year. Also within this physical pillar, uh, is, uh, is the club code of conduct, um, is having an athletic therapist uh, full-time and available as many of them already have. Emergency action plans are in place. Uh, and again, an outline medical process. And we've seen some awesome jobs by some of our clubs with uh, partnerships they've built in terms of rehab and recovery with some of um, um, the, the, uh, the businesses they've been working with. Um, we swing over to the mental pillar again, obviously. Uh, the mental piece has become really important in, in recent years as well. So offering six mental development sessions through October, November, December, January, February, March. Um, and again, some potential topics that we've discussed with, uh, with the clubs is uh, team first, goal setting, preparation, uh, simulation and imagery and overcoming adversity as well too. So, um, and then we will have uh, club access uh, for all teams to the whole nap next year, which again is just an awesome tool for coaches to really get the feel of their, their team and um, get some feedback and information discreetly from, from their athletes, um, which also um, accompanies with a, a sports psychologist uh, access as well. Uh, when we talk about the technical pillar, again, this will encompass a lot of the on ice and the off ice video work that our coaches are doing with the players. Uh, again, three practices per week we're looking at with, uh, with each of these uh, uh, AAA teams in the U15 category. Uh, again, the game the game number will actually might change a little bit for next year, but again, we're now all playing in the AEH, AEHL, um, which is now governed by Hockey Alberta, um, limiting the maximum of four tournaments. Again, just trying to ensure that we're not overbearing athletes with excessive amounts of tournaments and trying to meet that Hockey Canada long-term player development uh, guideline when it comes to uh, competition amounts. Uh, and then again, just having about 18 video review sessions, so that would equate to about three per month. And those could be through Zoom, those could be in person. Um, that just kind of remains to be seen with uh, what uh, next year looks like. Uh, and then the last pillar for us is life skills. So yes, um, it's great that uh, players are working hard and learning and um, uh, they're growing mentally and physically, but uh, we, we want them to be pillars and contributors within the community. And definitely um, I think that's a really important aspect to player development. Uh, the first part will be WHL draft session. So again, at this level, obviously the, the draft will be happening. Uh, at, at, at this level of play. So trying to provide families with lots of information as to the specific routes that players can choose. Um, and again, beginning planning for, for their future, um, having team identity, vision rules and, and, and uh, regulation sessions. And again, you'll see that through the vision and the presentation that these coaches are gonna present. And these are things that um, we know and expect that these coaches will be uh, reinforcing with their teams. Um, player uh, parent information sessions again stressing the importance that it's not just uh, the players that need to be communicated with but we need to ensure that our parents are on the same side and have information so that they can uh, support um, their their sons or daughters effectively as well um, and then just having individual meetings and reports with uh, with players to ensure that each player is being developed individually which we feel is a really important aspect to 
to any team right now. We can't um, generalize development. Each player needs something specific and uh, trying to provide those resources for uh, coaches to support players individually. Uh, and then team building events, um, whether it be bowling, escape room, soccer, that's up to the coaches to execute. And then community service events as well too. So um, whether we be coaching at the first shift or food bank or food shelter, whatever it is, um, just again, incorporating that life skills component into um, into the framework we feel is really important to accompany the physical, mental, and technical. So um, that's it for me. I'll uh, stop sharing here. Um, again, just uh, wanted to introduce Mark, Mark Devaney with Southside Athletic Club, Lee Zelaski with uh, CAC, uh, Leo Reagan with uh, M MLAC, and then uh, Steve Iwaski with KC. Uh, thanks again for joining us tonight and giving us a little snapshot as to what a, a week uh, looks like for you and a season looks like for you and playing for your team. So again, thanks for joining us and putting in the work to prepare a presentation. Uh, we'll start tonight with uh, Mark Devaney. We'll give you a little bit of time here and uh, you can share your screen. And thanks again, Mark, for joining us and putting something together. Uh, okay, well, first of all, um, again, my name is Mark Devaney from the Southside Athletic Club. Uh, thank you to all of you guys for, uh, for joining and for uh, Joel and Steve for putting this together. Uh, I was able to catch the other two presentations and there's lots of, uh, lots of great info and I think it's an awesome initiative from, uh, from the city. So um, with that, we'll start, if I can get to the next slide, there we go. Uh, so just a rough agenda, I'll run through the team staff, um, some additional roles, uh, program philosophy and objectives, um, a bit of info on the tryout and selection criteria, um, some development programming, our, our schedule, uh, the commi commitment to the community, some communication points, um, what's upcoming with Southside, and then uh, just looking at some alumni. Uh, so to start again, my name's Mark Devaney. Uh, this will be my 11th season coming up uh, with the Southside Athletic Club, seven as a coach. Uh, I spent two seasons as an assistant coach at U15, uh, AAA, um, and then moved into a head coaching role. So I've coached at U16 AA, U18 AA, U15 AA, and then the past two seasons at U15 AAA. Uh, I'm very fortunate to be surrounded by a uh, very experienced, very dedicated uh, staff. Um, we've got 14 years of combined experience at the level. Um, so I think it's a very, uh, very committed crew um, and, and lots of guys that have, uh, you know, good hockey experience and good hockey backgrounds from junior hockey uh, to college hockey and then a vast experience at uh, coaching minor hockey. Uh, our trainer, Al Alicia Suveni. Um, is a, it has a master's degree from the University of Alberta in physiotherapy, and she currently works as a pediatric physiotherapist, so she's able to provide a lot of, uh, a lot of support to our team and to our players. Um, so we're very fortunate to have this staff um, moving on to the, the certifications. Um, our staff is committed to, um, you know, improving and, and constantly evolving as a, as a staff. Uh, whether it be through uh, Hockey Alberta certifications, uh, Hockey Edmonton events, or, uh, you know, various other coaching uh, development programs, our, our entire staff is committed to continuing to evolve. We ask our players to do that. So if our, our staff, um, you know, wants to be leaders in that, it's, it's important to, to me and to our team. Um, so we've got, um, you know, two, two members that are High Performance One certified, uh, all of our bench staff is uh, development one and checking skills certified. And uh, we've got a few with uh, the online safety and, and first aid. Um, so it's a well, uh, well experienced staff and, and I'm really fortunate to be surrounded by, by all of them. Um, just some additional roles. Uh, Roy Powder is our director. So he's the uh, liaison between the team and the clubs. Um, our skills coaches, Scott McQueen from Better Player, uh, Wade Burt from 200 Hockey, uh, Gord Farnell, who works at the University of Alberta in the pre-varsity, uh, with pre-varsity teams, does our fitness, um, as well as some, some lifestyle uh, information. Uh, Melissa Lowe joined our team this past season uh, to help our players with sleep, recovery, uh, nutrition, uh, and, and has been a valuable tool for, for our players and our families to, to use this past season. Uh, John Stevenson uh, from Zone Performance 
uh, has done our sports psychology for a number of years. He's got experience with, uh, uh, you know, a number of different players in, in different programs in the NHL and, and uh, in every level in between. So uh, he's a, a great resource. And then uh, for video technology, we use Instap um, uh, with uh, the AEHL. Um, you know, we use Instap to provide uh, statistic packages, video analysis, uh, breakdowns that we can share with our players. Um, so Instat is a, a, another great tool for us to use. So jumping into uh, program philosophy. Um, so I, I start with our pillars and our core principles. Um, these pillars are, are, are set by the coaching staff and have been um, kind of staples of how we build and, and the foundation of, of what we want to see within our teams. Uh, at the beginning of each season, we'll, we'll run through a meeting with, uh, with our players and, and as a team uh, and define each of these categories specific to what it means to, to our individual teams. Um, and then we'll have a, a fifth pillar, which is player development, uh, player developed. Um, so these pillars kind of define uh, the, the framework of what we want our team and every decision we make, uh, you know, kind of to be, to be focused around. Um, you know, it's, it's important that, you know, respect, accountability, leadership, commitment are, are talked about. Um, but when we, when we put it out and we have the players define it, um, I found that they, they kind of, you know, can, can buy into that and they can understand it in their own words. Uh, and it's been a process that we've done for a number of years and, and I've uh, seen a lot of success from it. Um, We've got a team motto. So this year, uh, you know, with the uncertainty of, of every day and, and the uncertainty of our season, uh, brick by brick was was our motto. Um, you know, just understanding and, and trying to have the, the players focused one day at a time. Um, we didn't know what month to month would bring and we still don't know what what month to month would bring. But, you know, as a team, we, we thought it'd be very important to, to be able to, you know, put attention and, and put focus in. Uh, you know, one day at a time, operating one day at a time to, to ensure that, you know, we're not getting lost in all the noise that's around and, and all the uncertainty. We're, we're focused one step at a time. And uh, player, player priorities is something that we talk about often with our, uh, with our teams. Um, you know, U15 AAA is a, is a very busy level. Uh, there's lots of, uh, you know, commitment, uh, time commitment, I should say. Um, but we really enforce with our players that, um, you know, family always comes first, academics is second, and, and then hockey uh, follows that. And we want our players to, to understand that, you know, life happens and things happen at, at home. And, and it's important we take care of those responsibilities first. Um, and then, you know, you take care of your, your academics and, and you're, you're caught up and you're working ahead and you're doing everything you can to, to be ready for hockey. Uh, because it is a, a significant, um, you know, time commitment. Uh, program objectives. Um, when we look back at our season, we want to make sure that, um, you know, our players are, are able to take uh, tangible skills and commitment to lifelong health and wellness. And, and I think Steve touched on this, uh, you know, we want hockey to be a lifelong game and we want our athletes to have the resources and skills to be able to, you know, uh, have success throughout their their journey, you know, in health and wellness, and uh, leave our program with with those tools to be able to, you know, continue to make healthy decisions. Um, you know, we want, uh, you know, it's through skill development, uh, you know, with with Steve, uh, with Scott McQueen and and Wade Burt that we we execute this um, through our off ice fitness, uh, through our information se sessions on sleep and nutrition. Um, our goal is to provide resources and opportunity for continued growth and a lifelong commitment to their health and, and wellness. Um, development of intangible skills, so personal growth, core leadership skills. Um, we use hockey as a vessel to provide our, our, our athletes critical interpersonal skills that can be applied to hockey, academics, your personal relationships. And, and I think it's really important that we develop those. We start that process. Uh, you know, active activities in the community or within the team, uh, we challenge our players to step outside their comfort zone and, and start to, to develop those leadership skills. Uh, development and tools to assist athletes in achieving uh, goals consistent with program value priorities. 
So again, uh, our, our coaching staff discusses uh, the process with our players each and every single day. Uh, at the root of everything we do, we want to be able to instill in our players that in order to achieve their goals in hockey or, or otherwise, you have to have a planned, coordinated and logical uh, path. And I think it's important that we start to, to uh, you know, set that in motion with our players so that they understand the process to, to achieve those goals. Uh, providing a framework for continued development of good citizens, community leaders, and positive contributors to our community. Uh, so our belief is that better players or better people make better hockey players. Uh, and through our involvement in the community, our commit, commitment to interpersonal growth and self-development, our athletes will leave our program well equipped to uh, be positive role models and contributors within our community. So just jumping into uh, tryout and selection criteria, um, the, the first three days of our tryouts are, are open tryouts, and I think it's important to mention that, um, that all players start as a, at, a, at a clean slate. Um, you know, we're, we're not looking at where players played last year, um, you know, what color pants they've got on, or if they're wearing our club's colors. Um, you know, we want everybody to come in uh, with a clean slate and, and an opportunity to make our team. Uh, by day four, we'll select our, our top 40. Um, we'll, we'll split from the rest of the group. The, the remaining players will uh, continue their tryouts for the U15 AA programs. Uh, and then by the end of the first week, we'll be down to uh, about 28 players. And then our final roster by the end of the John Ferguson Memorial Tournament, which is you know towards the 15th of September. Uh, so selection criteria, um, I, I went through our, our pillars and our core principles first, uh, just to outline what we're looking for in the people that join our team. Um, it's important that, you know, th that they're able to perform at the level, um, you know, but as you, you, you move forward in hockey, uh, the kind of person that you are away from the rink, at the rink, it really matters. So we're looking for players that, uh, you know, can, can fall in line with our pillars and and be a, a positive representation of our team. Uh, the tangible skills that we're looking for, uh, you know, ten, uh, foundational skills of, of skating, shooting, passing, obviously those are, those are important. Uh, play with and without the puck, decision-making, work ethic, uh, determination, coachability. Uh, you know, we're, we're looking for all those things in our tryouts and, and uh, you know, obviously um, we want players that, that can, perform at the level, uh, but we also are looking for players that, that are going to be able to take strides throughout our season. And, and uh, you know, we're looking for the best player towards the end and, and putting our best team together. Uh, so just jumping in now to uh, the, the, the development programming. So I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier some of our skill development. Um, our power skating is done through better player. Um, Scott McQueen has got uh, a vast experience in, uh, in, in, you know, skill development. He's also got uh, some significant playing experience. Same thing with Wade Burt from 200 Hockey. Uh, he does our puck and skill uh, work. Uh, so again, the, these skills that we can't do uh, every day at practice, we, we, you know, look to experts in their field to, to supplement what we're doing. Um, you know, foundations are developed through se our season plan. Um, you know, using the, the, the courses, the high performance one, um, you know, it's important that we understand that progression and repetition is the best way to continue to that, that skill development within practices. Uh, I've mentioned before our, our physical uh, development program uh, is supported by Gord Farnell. Um, we've also got uh, Alicia, our trainer and the coaching staff who help support that. Um, Gord, we've, we've really uh, worked with him to introduce proper off-ice training mechanics, uh, mechanics, sorry, um, you know, just to ensure that players are, you know, progressing and moving forward in their off-ice development in, in a safe and effective way. Um, you know, I think there's lots of misconceptions about, uh, you know, putting on too much weight or lifting too early. I think it's important that, that athletes have the proper instruction first. And, and that's what Gord's able to provide our team. And I mentioned rest and recovery programs with Melissa Lowe. 
uh, our mental uh, component, uh, again, supported by John Stevenson, um, controlling the controllables and, uh, you know, visualization, mental preparation is, is areas that, that he really focuses on. Um, I think it's important that, that athletes understand, uh, you know, that, that to be able to perform uh, on demand, it's, it's important that we can get our mental side of the game uh, in check. So John, John supports that with us. Uh, and then lifestyle, again, supported uh, through our off-ice uh, work with Gord and Melissa. Um, they're able to provide some health and wellness advice for our players and families. And then through our volunteering, we're able to develop lifestyle and life skills. Uh, so uh, what a week looks like. Um, obviously, I mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, at U15 AAA, it, it's the first taste of elite level hockey for, for many players and families. And I think it's important to recognize that it is very busy. Um, you know, we've got roughly three practices a week. We've got a biweekly skills session uh, and two games a week. Uh, we also add uh, approximately one additional event per week. So that could be video review, a team meeting, off-ice fitness, sports psychology, goal setting, team bonding, um, all those things that, that, are, that have been mentioned. But I think it's important that everybody understands that it is a, a significant time uh, commitment, um, but it is very manageable once you kind of get into the, into the groove. Uh, tournaments was mentioned um, from, from Joel, but uh, the John Reed Memorial is, is obviously one that uh, everyone circles on their calendar, uh, the Western Crown Invitational. Uh, Medicine Hat Hounds. These are these are all tournaments that uh, qualification or invitation is required. Um, so as a coaching staff, we're, we're looking to put our players in the best position, our team in the best position to qualify or be invited to these tournaments. Um, you know, the exposure is, is something that everybody wants. Um, and I've been fortunate in my three years with this team uh, that we've been at the John Reed Memorial Tournament all three seasons, which is a, a, a big achievement for, for each of those teams. Commitment to the community. So, um, you know, each and every year, I think it's important for our players to, to go out and experience, um, you know, the world for, from the lens of people who don't have the, the opportunity to play this game. I think for players and coaches, it is, uh, you know, it's a luxury and we're, we're very fortunate to be in the positions we are. Uh, and for our players, I think it's important to, to be able to understand that and, and appreciate that a little bit more. Uh, so we do stuff with the Edmonton Food Bank while we're uh, over Christmas, where we'll go in and, and sort uh, donated food. Um, in the past, we've worked with Sports Central, uh, again, sorting donations. And then this past season, we, uh, we teamed up with Canadian Blood Services. Uh, because of the pandemic, we weren't really able to um, do a whole bunch as a team. So we challenged each player to uh, nominate a donor, uh, a blood donation on their behalf. And we, our goal was to raise donations, but also raise awareness. Um, and I think I, at last check, we had over, over 50 donations, which was uh, pretty significant from our team. Um, and then the uh, SSAC leadership program was something that we were looking to, to kick off for this past season. Uh, obviously, with the pandemic, we weren't able to do that. But uh, basically, we want to partner our team up with a, a U13 AA program, uh, start to provide our, our athletes with the opportunity to, uh, you know, go out and mentor or learn a little bit about coaching. Um, you know, that team will come to our practice, we'll go to theirs uh, in a game and kind of get to know each other a little bit. And then and then cap off that event with, uh, you know, a team bonding with with both teams so something we're looking forward to to starting off again uh this upcoming season communication expectations so uh starting with our players uh, we talk uh, about shared ownership um, we don't want this to be a, a one-way street where the the coaches come in and and uh, are, are just commanding and telling everybody what to do uh, we want our players to to be accountable we want them to you know take uh, ownership of, of their team, their season and their development, um, you know, and, and that's part of, we want them to be able to understand the, the communication is two ways. It's not just us telling them, but we want them to, to be able to communicate openly with us, whether it's, you know, questions or concerns or, you know, if they're not understanding something, we want them to be able to, uh, 
you know, have that dialogue. Shared ownership also applies to our, our coaching staff. Um, you know, we're not a, we're a team as a, as a staff and it's, you know, if there's a task to be done or if there's something that we want to accomplish, um, it's not up to, you know, looking over your shoulder. We want our staff to just uh, take it on and, and, and run with it. So, um, and then an open door policy, um, you know, we've got uh, WhatsApp group chat that we communicate with our players, um, but it's important for them to recognize that, that our door and our phones are always on and, and open to receiving that, that communication, um, whether it's questions or concerns, um, our doors are always open to the players. Uh, parent communication. So we, we obviously do a, a team meeting at the start of the season. Uh, and I think we're, we're planning on doing another one uh, towards the middle of the season. I think it's an, a good opportunity to get in front of the parents again. Uh, one thing that we do is a monthly newsletter from the head coach. Uh, it, it sort of does a look back on, on the month pre prior and uh, a little bit of insight and information as to what's coming uh, some of the information as far as planning events, um, things like that are in that monthly newsletter. And it's something that we've done for the past couple seasons. And um, I've heard nothing but, but positive feedback from that. Uh, we also have Twitter and Facebook pages, which provide our, our public content. Um, and, and those are platforms that we share pictures, videos, um, you know, our, our community events, and, and it's always available. Jumping into the uh, SSAC event. So what we've got coming, uh, the SSAC summer camp um, is, is an opportunity for players um, within the club and, and that are uh, joining our club. Um, and that starts in, in August. Uh, re registration will open soon. Um, the U15 spring ID skates are, um, again, we're hoping to have these in, in uh, 2021, um, open to all new to SSAC players and their families. Um, so it's a, an opportunity for families to hear a little bit about our club um, from uh, the club representatives and an opportunity for players to get onto the ice with some of the U15 coaches um, at various levels. Uh, but obviously with uh, the pandemic and the uncertainty about restrictions, I think the best thing to do uh, to stay informed on, on all these events would be through our website or uh, club Twitter account. And I know uh, in the elite stream, every athlete's uh, path and journey is a little bit different. And, and you know, we, we recognize the, that not every player continues in, in hockey. There's uh, lots that have successes in, in various fields in work or uh, through academics. But I did want to highlight a few players that uh, have played in our club and, and in this program. Uh, Hayden Fechner, who is a member of our team last year, selected in the 10th round by Saskatoon. Uh, Liam Keeler, a member from 2014 to 2016, who's a member of the Edmonton Oil Kings in the Western Hockey League. Uh, Bjorn Robinson from 2014 to 15, who's playing in the AJHL with the White Court Wolverines. Stuart Skinner, 2011-2013, uh, Bakersfield Condors, and he was played his first National Hockey League game this year, so we were super excited for him. And that's, uh, that's everything I had. I, I hope I was able to provide a, a bit of a snapshot into uh, the program here at Southside Athletic Club. Um, I, again, I, I thank you to everybody for jumping on the call and thank you to Joel and Steve for putting this on. I think it's a fantastic opportunity for, uh, for families to, to get a little bit of information uh, before they make their big decision. So thank you very much. And with that, I will uh, stop sharing here if I can. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks, Mark. That was uh, that was excellent and really professional and a really good snippet and snapshot of uh, what it's like to play for Southside. So amazing job. Thanks very much. Um, we'll turn it over to our second coach of the night uh, from the CAC Canadian Athletic Club is uh, Lee Zalaski. Um, we'll uh, get you to share your screen and uh, go ahead. Thanks. Thanks again, Lee, for coming. Thank you for having me and putting this on, Mark. Really good job. You set the set the bar really high for the, for the rest of us here. So, uh, with that being said, we'll get going here. So, thank you for again having me. Uh, my name's Lee Zlasky. Uh, it's my second year with the Canadian Athletic Club. Uh, 
as a coach with the U15 program. To start off here, we're just going to chat about some of our pillars uh, within our within our program. So our club has defined these three pillars as integral parts uh, between all our, our levels. So from the U13 all the way up to the U18 level, uh, we're all familiar with these three pillars and it's what every uh, team bases, uh, bases their foundation off of. So that's character, attitude, community, and the visions to offer an elite hockey program, providing players the opportunity and environment to enhance their hockey and interpersonal skills. So with our players, when we, when we start uh, getting our team together in even in August, we start discussing these three pillars. It's, uh, it's very important that we have the proper foundation in place uh, when we're bringing people in. Um, the players, the families and all that, as, as I talk here, I'll get a little more deeper into it, but we start talking about the character aspect and what that means. Uh, some of the visuals I show you here through this presentation are just quick screenshots uh, of, of the handbook um, and whatnot. So the first thing being character, that's the one we're looking for with our players uh, within our program. We talk about attitude with them, what that means and uh, start building off that. The next thing we talk about with our third pillar is the community. So ultimately we want to make better people when they leave us here. Um, we really, this year wanted to uh, build, start building a legacy. I, I haven't been with CAC that long. So being two years and our staff essentially is what, what's our legacy going to be with our team and with, with the players we leave behind. And we want our players essentially be good community members, but also start building and contributing to the, the legacy that CAC currently has. With that being said. Hi there, my name is Hi Davidson and I currently play on the CAC U15 AAA team. I would love to tell you about how awesome the U15 AAA program is. First off, it's a big commitment. You're on the ice lots, you're working out lots, but if you love hockey and you love getting better, it's, it's truly amazing. It's the best thing ever and it's really fun. Um, my favorite part, personally, is going on road trips, taking bus trips with all your buddies, and playing tournaments, and playing teams you wouldn't usually play in your Pee to Adam years. And I think that's what makes it competitive, makes it fun, and really makes U15 AAA what it is. Hi, my name is Ethan Hughes. I have my second year playing U15 CC AAA. The U15 program is great for developing and learning how to expose us to the next elite level of hockey. The coaching staff have a high level of hockey IQ and have a great understanding of what it takes to get to the next level. My name is Matt Davidson and my son's been with U15 AAAs with Lee um, for the past couple of years at CAC. Some of the benefits of this program, a lot of these people know each other, they play minor hockey there, they grow up together. Um, so that was really nice and Lee did a great job of fostering those connections and building them even through Zoom and those things in a tough time. Um, Lee also is a great job with organization. He gets skill guys out when they need to. He organizes extra ice time. He has a good read of what the players want and what they need. And he communicates very well and he expects them to do the same. Uh, so we are very happy with our program. Hi, I'm Brady Ness from the Canadian Athletic Club. And I'm going to talk about some things I enjoyed about my year uh, here. Things I enjoyed were a good group of guys. They pushed me and they made me better. Good coaching staff. They also pushed me and in form every day and some strengths of the U15 AAA program is there's great coaches and great teammates uh, push me every every day and to make me a better player and person. As a parent I feel very fortunate to have Lee and his entire coaching staff coaching my son. They were always treated with respect as young adults and pushed. Boys were taught many things on and off the ice and always held accountable. We appreciate all the time and effort you put into our team. Our ultimate frisbee team was really successful today because we used a lot of hard work, teamwork, and by doing that, we communicated well with each other and we also uh, depended on each other with trust. I noticed how great of an association it really is. The coaches are very, very dedicated to helping all the players and they develop great relationships with all of them. And the players were very welcoming and very friendly and respectful. And I do believe that it's a great place for anyone who's looking to take their game to the next level. The strengths of playing for CAC U15 are the teams we play against are very competitive and we are too. The 
it's very enjoyable to play for a great group of players. My name is Ahmed Asa, and I've played for CAC for the previous two years. This program helped me develop my game to be a much better hockey player. What I like most is the coaching staff is open to any questions you have and always pushes you to be your best. And the locker room feels like family, and everyone has fun. This is our first season with CAC, and our son plays in the U15 AAA program. Even though COVID presented some pretty significant challenges to minor hockey, we found that the CAC staff went to great lengths to keep the team engaged and challenged in a fun and inclusive environment. It's great to see our son be part of something so much bigger than himself. We are thankful to the coaches, Lee, Nick, Connor, and Warren, for all the time and energy they put into the CAC program. They clearly understand their important role in developing young men, not just fabricating hockey players. Okay, so that takes me to my next part here with our coaching staff. Uh, it goes all saying, the, guy, the people and personnel surrounding us uh, truly enhance our program. And I'm to go through a few of them here. So Connor Middleton, I uh, coached Connor at, at the U, uh, used to be the U15 AAA, which is now the U16 level. And uh, after his retirement, he, he decided he wanted to get in some coaching. So he's been with us for about three to four years now, po post of his hockey career. Uh, Nick Trudeau, he used to be a coach in the league, joined our staff a couple of years ago, great addition to our team. Um, stole him and he's made our program a lot better. Warren Taves has been with myself uh, for the last uh, eight years or so has been coaching. Got Dave Rastian, who's our goaltending coach, also with ATC goaltending, Matt Starkey, hockey operations, our director, Bad McCory, athletic ther therapist, Cassidy Koo. Off ice and conditioning nutrition, we use Ryan Vignot, RVX Factor. Power skating coaches, Brittany Miller, sports psychologist, John Stevenson, and skills coach, uh, Wade Burt. Uh, so with our staff, there's a, just such a collective knowledge. Um, we're able to use, build off each other, support the players, um, whatever their needs are. And each coach is able to build a relationship and that player is able to rely on, on the different coaches when needed. So myself, I, I played, um, I played my junior at Western hockey league. And then I came to the U of A on my, on my WHL scholarship, uh, played a year of pro after, and then hockey forced me to uh, hang it up. So uh, sorry, injury forced me to hang it up. And for the last 10 years, I've been coaching at the, the U15 level. Um, I've also spent three years coaching at the U of A uh, kind of in the interim. So our coaching philosophy here, constructing a uh, learning environment where the foundation is based on trust, caring, respect, hard work, integrity, and humility, and effective communication. Uh, we're trying to foster a culture here and build relationships with players we really focus on the first month of building the trust with them and, and th that caring aspect. So they see that we care about them. And then as the season progresses, they can come to us and discuss things as, you know, they're going through their overall growth and development. But those first, the first few uh, months, we really worked on the trust part of it. So our team selection criteria for a skater, we're looking at compete level, hockey sense, skill level, then goalies compete level, puck stopping ability and game management. We're always looking at the intangibles of the player as we move through it. Uh, the, the, the trial process itself is a th about a three to four week uh, scenario. We, uh, we have an ID camp, which I'll chat about in a sec. But, sorry. Uh, so the start of September, we, we uh, go through the first week. We Did I, just go on, did I just go on mute? I'm sorry, Joel. Yep, but you're back. Okay. I don't know where I got cut off. Did you hear all this stuff? Uh, there, there's just about six words, Lee, so you're all good. Yeah, just a okay. little snippet. Okay, so with the forward criteria, a little more depth. Uh, again, we're looking for with the forwards, uh, communicating, reading off teammates. We're looking at the hockey sense aspect. Can they play center, wing position, uh, their overall compete level, and then some skill level attributes. Defense slightly different looking at for the hockey sense aspect gap, but compete level doesn't change skill level the foundational skills we're still looking at goalies compete level being the biggest one never given up. We're looking for a goalie who never gives up regardless of the score and they're always looking to make next save. We're looking at their puck stopping ability and their game management, especially with them being able to play pucks. 
communication as we move through the year. Uh, we do have a startup meeting, which is this picture here uh, you see in the middle, where we introduce our players. We have a formal meeting with our parents, go through the whole CAC uh, breakdown. Uh, we do have quarterly meetings with our parents and the coaches, which we discuss stuff so they have a chance to ask questions. We have one-on-one -on -one player coach meetings where it's practice and games. We have midpoint player coach parent meetings where at that point, players are provided with a, a report card, an assessment of their year, and parents can ask those questions in a private meeting. We have team chats, uh, various social media on that, uh, which are overseen by the coaches. Um, and also the players have their own chat, but they're always doing it in an utmost respectful manner uh, and they have everything different. <laughs> so we also have one-on-one -on -one video breakdown with our players where we'll sit with players whether it be on Zoom or in person at, at a normal time and go over one-on-one -on -one video with them. Association monthly meetings are where us coaches get together at CAC once a month. We sit down, go through some things uh, that we may be experiencing, try to build off each other to help our program grow. The pillars of development we use, uh, we use the physical, mental, technical, and life skills. Uh, we really talk about the habits in each of them and push our players through them um, to make sure they're, they're pushing themselves to achieve success the best they can in each of them. So just to touch on just slightly each. So the mental aspect with our sports psychologist, John Stevenson, uh, we do have a facility, our room upstairs at the CAC arena, which we use. Uh, John goes through some individual goal settings, uh, simulation, adversity, focus aspects. As coaches, we also do uh, individual team goal setting worksheets with the players, and we refer to it, and we will have player meetings one-on-one -on -one with them to go over their, their goal setting sheets. We also touch on those goal setting sheets as the year progresses, so they're just not forgotten. We have game reflections we do like players doing. So post game, they'll they'll do a game reflection in their binder. They come out, see a coach before they leave leave the rink after a game. So if they haven't heard much feedback or they feel they haven't, we have an op opportunity to chat with them before they leave the rink that night. Video sessions, we use VidSwap. So there's a little screenshot off the bottom right. You'll see uh, something there, it gives some analysis and that's based off VidSwap, shooting and areas where we're getting our opportunities and the feedback for our players. We have virtual player and uh, also team meetings. Uh, one thing we really worked at, we have two handbooks we use. One is, is just working on straight life habits and, and building, uh, building skills. So Sean Covey's uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. This, this is the first book they'll get. This is part of the, essentially uh, their team life skill handbook. We work through each of these habits and uh, it's proven to make effective teenagers and they essentially become more resilient. And that's what we're trying to, trying to build. Uh, pillars of development for physical. We have a spring ID camp in a typical year. So we'd usually have one in April, May. And we'll see what happens this year. Um, that will allow us to start identifying players. Nutrition seminar, we have day to day planning. So RV, our off ice conditioning coach, goes through that with the players and uh, as well prepares them with day to day planning for nutrition. We have four team off ice conditioning sessions per month. Some are at our centralized location at CAC or at uh, or at, at uh, RVX Factor on the West End. With that, the players do daily surveys, which I have access to, or the staff has access to, to see how they're feeling, how their sleep habits are, and overall how their well being is. Some alternative activities players do aerobics, yoga, spin sessions. We do fitness testing at the beginning of the season and mid season. And then our trainer attends all the games and practices when required. For technical, we do three to four. Uh, one and a quarter hour average practices per week. We use the team kind of breakdown for our level. So percentages applied to our practices. So 40% technical, 15% individual, uh, et cetera. So we have four more individualized skill sessions per month focusing on fundamental player skills. So that is either puck handling or power skating uh, with Brittany Miller. Off ice skill sessions, we do stuff before practice if we do not have a skills coach in where we will work them through circuits or just specialized uh, off ice stick handling programs. Our goalie coach regularly attends practices. Dave Ratchin sets up uh, a program for our goalies and they also attend one on one sessions with him. 
we, we try our best to have player movement to the U16 AAA program. So there's exposure there and they have an opportunity to progress in their hockey career. Uh, school connections, over 75% of our players attend a skills academy in Edmonton. So the various programs. So, so myself, I have, I've been fortunate enough to get to know some of the people where it's St. FX, uh, STM, uh, Vimy, and, and that were, and I do my best as a head coach to be communicating with those programs. So if the players in the skills academy, uh, those, those, uh, instructors can work with our players and their development at those programs too. This is a couple screenshots from our systems uh, package that players get. Uh, so the terms, uh, a terminology sheet they'll get, as well as just an example of a four check maybe we do throughout the year. So our players get things depending on what our needs are. We don't just bombard them with different systems. Uh, we try to find what fits for our team. And as the year progresses, we will give them different four checks or different power play setups. But we try to meet our players' needs as well as push them out of their comfort zone to develop. And then the last pillar I'll chat about here is some of the life skills. We work with our team to develop a covenant and a vision and some expectations. Uh, the player exposure, which was highlighted a little bit earlier by Joel, uh, the game schedule, as well as we're trying to go to two to three elite uh, level tournaments in the year. Last couple of years, we went to the Pat Quinn uh, in Burnaby. We went out to Winnipeg for a tournament out there. We do try to attend any of the elite tournaments to give our players uh, the utmost exposure we can uh, by applying to those tournaments, whether it be the John Reed or Calgary tournament there. We do plenty of team builders, especially through the warmer months, trying to get them outside as much as possible. So one of the big ones we did this year was the bike ride pretty much from Horlack Park to somewhere on the Northeast Edmonton. And through the day we had intermittent stops and we did different activities of team building. We do public speaking. So each player has to uh, essentially interview another player we, as well as we work on the public speaking aspect through the year. We do a monthly team meal at CAC where all players get together and we have meals upstairs just to kind of socialize and get together and chat with them. Mentorship, we have our players working with uh, CAC teams at the U13 level, sending players out. We have guest speakers that attend, whether it be junior A, WHL sessions. Uh, this year we had Ian Herbers from the Golden Bears come chat. Uh, we had Ryan Marsh from um, Saskatoon, Michael Chan with the Oil Kings chatting about the WHL aspect. And then we had Bram Steven from um, Spruce Grove at Adam Mano Assured Park. So we're, we're trying to cover all aspects, give the players as much information as they can. Community initiatives, these are some of the things we are working on, whether it be a food bank drives, players working with minor hockey teams, spring or fall cleanup, winter shelving programs, and senior home visits. The team covenant this year, we had the players came up with, with the saying, I'm about to rip. It just kind of came out of nowhere, to be honest with you. They gravitate toward it, it worked. They found it funny. And we'd say when we said it, it meant we were, we were honestly getting to work and that's what it kind of came down to. So with our team covenant, the pillars are the main three at the bottom. The rest of the pillars the players came up with themselves. Uh, they've had a, basically a, a private vote. They gave me some of their, uh, or the coaching staff, their top things that are important for a team covenant. And we pieced it together. The three on the outside is how our team plays that they decided. So discipline, playing 200 feet and with speed. So this entire covenant was designed by a team aside from the character, attitude, community pillars, which our, our association has defined. Here was them uh, earlier in the fall raking leaves. And this is a Facebook post by one of the, one of the Facebook members about our team. Um, and if you want to follow us, uh, we're at CAC underscore U15 AAA. And that is my email. Thank you for Joel and Hockey Edmonton allowing me to present. That was awesome, Lee. Yeah, thanks very much. The video was excellent. Really, uh, really appreciate that. So, um, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, next up, we've got Leo Reagan from uh, MLAC. Uh, Leo, you can share your screen and go ahead. And thanks again for, for joining us and putting this together. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Joel and uh, Steve, for putting this on. I think this is a great initiative uh, for Hockey Edmonton to. Uh, both uh, the four great clubs that we have within the city. Um, um, I'll just talk a little bit at first about uh, about Umlac and uh, what it's all about. I think it's probably the most uh, storied uh, franchise out of the 
84, I could be wrong, but with over 85 years of minor hockey in Edmonton, uh, we've been around for a while. Um, and I just like the last little bit there. The Maple, Maple Leaf Athletic Club is very proud to sponsor the Bantam and teams today with the same dedication from the club executive Henry White did back in 1931. So that's kind of dating it a little bit, but uh, the club has been around for a very, very long time, and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. Um, here's our staff. So I'm up there in the top. Uh, I don't want to date myself, but I've been coaching for a while. Uh, I think I'm 20 plus years. Uh, I spent 10, 10 or 11 up at the 18 AAA level uh, with Don. Um, and then uh, we uh, were fortunate enough to get involved with 15 AAA uh, Maple Leaf Athletic Club last year. So this is our second year coming back. Um, our club president, the two guys there in the bottom, the, the one with all the hairs are, is our club president, uh, Neil Brown. And then uh, the fellow with the hat on is Tyler Richards, our GM. Um, and then I'm pretty fortunate. Um, we kind of retooled our staff this year uh, going into the, the current season. And um, we had a couple of players that we used to coach that uh, we coach at the 18 AAA level and, and push them through into their junior career. And then uh, their outstanding citizens, uh, you know, Tyler Morrison there up at the top. I mean, he played Western Hockey League, AJ, HL, and then he uh, graduated onto Grant McHugh and he's got a couple of championships there. He's now an accountant. Uh, so it's not always about you know, chasing the dream and going and making millions at the, at the higher level, but Mo was our captain in midget and he's an outstanding uh, human being graduated. He's a accountant now, uh, account. So he still has his brains after playing a long time. And then Heather Cooper played, uh, four years in the Western hockey league. He, you know, he sustained a goal, a game or a point, a game kind of career. He graduated to the U of A. Uh, he uh, was fortunate enough to have a national championship underneath his belt uh, and a CIS. So having been coached by Herbert and some really good coaches, um, these guys brought, you know, made us a little younger, I guess. Uh, the audience isn't getting any younger. We're getting a little bit older, Don and I. So uh, we kind of resourced out uh, and found some really good coaches. Nick Carter there in the corner, he also uh, uh, had a good uh, AJ career teacher now so he's an educator so he works with kids all the time so um he helps uh communicate and get the message through um pretty good the 13th picture there up that we did this year and then probably the brains behind the organization is up there in the corner our trainer uh, athletic, athletic therapist uh volunteer extraordinaire she does a lot for the club she's there every practice every team building event um and every game so um, I'll kind of jump into, you know, we're always asked philosophy. What's your philosophy, coach? What's philosophy? And I've kind of changed it and I've turned it around to more of a purpose. And, and what we do as a staff is we really want to coach and develop these athletes into better hockey players, but more importantly, better people. Um, I've used the everyday people, everyday players kind of slogan uh, for a long time. And basically all that is, is uh, I want just an everyday dude that wants to come to the rank and practice and learn and, and be a good teammate. And then most importantly, that hopefully through the, you know, through the season and through their, their career, that they're really good people and that they're, they're giving back a little bit. So how we do that is we do a ton of team building. Um, I think team building is, is the number one thing in, in gelling your team. It starts right from uh, right where we're in the trial process. Uh, you know, we're doing some, you can team build in the hallway, um, I learned a ton actually through, uh, through Steve over there, the Alberta Cup, of being involved with Alberta Cup the last couple of years. Uh, you learn a ton of little games that you can play in, in a bathroom if you had to kind of thing. But, you know, you're always, we're always, we're always team building, we're always competing, we're always having some fun. And then we pride ourselves in clearing constant communication. So that, again, is started right from the beginning. Once the team set, uh, we do a SWAT. Uh, I'm sure we'll, everyone knows what SWAT is, but it's, uh, we do that right off the bat. We do it a little bit different though. So we do it right at the beginning of the year. Uh, we go through weaknesses, strength, uh, um, what they're scared of, their um, what where they want to go the next the next year. Um, we come back to it again halfway through, um, and we touch points. You know, if it's if it's a development thing, they it's sort of a contract, I guess, between the athlete and the coaching staff. Just something to make sure that we're touching base on each individual's specific needs. Um, we like to practice with purpose. Um, 
I mean, practice is everything. It, it's absolutely everything. Uh, we try to uh, create a competitive, fun environment. Um, I'm big on small area games where uh, we, we do a ton of that. We, with our coaching staff, there's five active coaches you know, practice on the ice. Uh, lots of um, split ice where we work on specific board and defensive skills on each end of the ice. Um, and then something I really learned is, is the power of video in, in practice. Um, I mean, we all have iPhones, we all take them on the ice. So, uh, we've been using it a lot here in this skill spring skill season that we're in right now. And, uh, you know, as we're, as we're doing a drill, it's, it's absolutely awesome to take the drill, uh, you know, take five or six and then throw it into our group chat. There's no, no commentary on it. It's just basically, I think the athletes get to see themselves doing the skill. Uh, either succeeding or maybe not succeeding. So they get to do some self-analysis on it on their own. And then usually you get a phone call or, or a text from a, from, a, from a player a little bit later on asking for a little bit one-on-one -on, -one on that specific skill. Um, and then we, we're big on basic skills. We're big on, on taking the, the basic skill and, and developing into some game awareness, whole part, whole kind of uh, methodology that we use. So I mean, sometimes we'll start with a small area game at five o'clock right after school, um, you know, get them going with a small area game, break it down into the skill that we're trying to execute at that point of the season, and then bring it back to the small area game towards the end. And again, just competing all the time and creating that, that competitive, fun environment. I don't know if we're allowed to say fun anymore, but we try to keep it as fun as possible. Um, the biggest thing at 15 AAA with a little bit of my experience is this is the beginning. This is the beginning of that elite uh, development plan. Um, so we try to touch all parts of it and prepare them for the next, hopefully three, four seasons that they're ahead of and, and developing and getting them to the next, to the next level. Um, our selection criteria, it's, it's pretty similar to what, uh, what Mark and Lee have done. Um, we've kind of just baked it, broken it down to four components, you know, a brief presentation here, but obviously skating is number one. You have to be able to skate game has changed so much. It's all about eliminating time and space and, and you have to be able to skate to do that. So, you know, they need to be agile, lateral movement, transition, find good ice and then and angles. They got to be able to angle. They got to angle inside out, outside in, whichever way you're going to be for that day or however you can eliminate time and space. Uh, buck control skills. Um, passing is probably hard. In Canada, I think it's one of our weakest skills that we don't spend enough time on on passing and catching a pass, especially on forehand, backhand. Um, and we, we spend a ton, a ton of time on that. Um, rolling traffic, can they, do they like to go to the middle of the ice? Do they like to get there? Can they control the puck? And then they're one-on-one -on -one skills. So basically that's on the offensive side. Uh, can they can they attack one-on-one? -on -one? Do they have on, on an effective one-on-one -on -one skill set uh, defending one-on-one? -on -one? So they can, can they defend the one-on-one? -on -one? You know, how's their stick position? How's their feet? Um, and it jumps into puck protection. So then, you know, you're getting into all kinds of good things there with delays and awareness. You know, I don't know how many times you'll hear me yell shoulder check in a practice or even a game surrounding. Just, again, just be aware, especially kids coming up from Pee Wee into Bantam. Um, they haven't hit yet. They haven't, you know, they haven't been body checked. They haven't been taught how to body check. So I think, you know, shoulder checking, just game awareness and angling and teaching them how to take a hit and, use the boards and, and, and prepare or, or push back or hit back and all those fundamentals. Um, and then that next play on you mentality, um, it's something I stole from Frags, Tim Fraggles at Nate. I got the uh, practice one day there and I kind of stole it off him. And then it's something that's kind of stuck with us and stuck with the athletes that, you know, every time you get that puck, it's on you to make a play next time. So just be aware and prepared to make a play. And then of course, hockey sense. Uh, I think hockey sense can be taught as the season goes on, but as we're evaluating, we are looking forward. Do they have some good read and react skills? Uh, how are they without the puck? What are they doing without the puck? Are they in the picture? So that's just something you know, we always use as an example that if uh, you know we're watching the video, um, we want to make sure that we see five white jerseys at all times. Uh, don't be the guy standing off you know, 40 feet away from the puck by not touching it. And, fun in a, in a game situation if you're you're not getting any touches and again it comes back to competitive I'm, I'm a very competitive guy um I'm very passionate in practice we try to bring that competitive nature just to uh, just to see and it's almost a skill I think now is is competing and and if they want to compete they want to have the harder they want to work to get it back 
um, you know, where they're puck fills and stuff that we work on now and start drills with stuff like that. So um, that's kind of it in a nutshell, skating, puck control skills, puck protection and hockey senses that we try to evaluate with at, at the beginning of a trial process. Um, gonna kind of jump into the pillars now. This is something that once our team is made, um, this is all done by the players, by the athletes, much like what Lee said. It's a meeting or it's, it, it's a series of meetings. Um, you know, we'll lead them a little bit. We'll give them some core values. Uh, but basically, you know, they got to, it's their team. And they got to, you know, we can, we can lead them down the path how we want to play. We all want to play fast. We all want to play hard. We all want to have that 200 foot mentality. But at the end of the day, does a, a 13 or 14 year old athlete really know what that means? So, they came up with this. They came up with trust, relentless, um, and motivated. And so one of the biggest thing with the Maple Leaf Athletic Club is bringing back a little bit of legacy to the crest uh, uh, and trying to make our make ourselves a little bit more respected uh, amongst amongst our peers. Um, so that comes with confidence, being courageous, and being coachable. And again, those are all you know, put together by our by our kids. Um, we wanted to play relentless. We wanted to be, and we wanted to you know, we never wanted to be at work. We don't want to be at work. Um, motivated. So that, again, it's coming to the rink. It's coming to the rink motivated. I mean, you're, you're enthusiastic. You're ready uh, coming to practice with a um, And then you're ready to be able to face adversity. Because um, uh, we all fit. I mean, we definitely all faced it this year. This was a really good growth year, I think, for our athletes as far as facing adversity and how to deal with it, especially, you know, the six inches between your ears with it's the most important right now and then trust now trust is from 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 our staff to our athletes from our athletes back to us to our to everyone and again it comes down to communicating and it's it feel as a coach that you know i'm still trying to get better at is is being able to communicate and being able to communicate to each individual not just all 19 of them right so and then they brought up accountable and clear mind so just you know swipe that mind if it's a you know uh, if it's a four nothing period and you're coming back in between the intermissions, just be able to wipe the slate and be able to go back out and get back to what we want to do, go back to our work ethic and our competing. Hopefully we can turn it around. And then that 86, 86,400. So that was kind of our slogan uh, through this COVID pandemic year. And that's how many seconds there are in a year or sorry, in a day. Um, so I kind of brought it around and I said, Imagine you woke up every morning and you had eighty six thousand four hundred dollars deposited into your bank account. Let's make sure we use it, use it all up. Because the next day, guess what? You get another eighty six thousand four hundred dollars deposited back into your bank account. Let's make every day count and every second count. Um, and it kind of stuck with us. You know, it, it was a, it was a tough year, obviously for all of us, for coaches and all that, all the athletes. But I think the biggest thing all these athletes in our age group this year learned was the importance of of now and, and making now happen uh, and be important because it can, again, it can be taken away quickly from us. So, um, so that's our four pillars. And we, you know, we, we always go back to, we still go back to, we still talk uh, all the time about it. We're still active in Zoom meetings. Yes, we are back on the edge right now, but again, it's a lot of it's done like this through the screen kind of thing. Um, I'm gonna jump into what a work looks like. Um, Again, you're you're in the elite stream now. You're you're 15 triple A. Um, obviously, it wasn't like this this year, but in a regular, it kind of went back to hours last year. So, you know, rest is always important in teaching them how to rest properly. I'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later on. Uh, Tuesday, we would practice and spin. So, the one of the benefits we have at the at, at Amalak is one of our practices every week is at Russ Barnes. Um, and then Russ Barnes down the street is uh, is our clubhouse. So, in our clubhouse, we have access to spin bikes. We would either spin uh, before practice or we would spin after practice. Uh, Wednesday is, is, is skills and competition Wednesday, I call it. So that's a day where we'll break out and do 20 minutes of skill specific uh, drills and we compete. We compete for about 40 minutes on the small area games. Always something on the line. There's a Dairy Queen just down the street too. So it's kind of cool to have that if we're at Russ Barnes and losing teams buying ice cream cones or coaches are buying ice cream cones. But Again, we, we compete and always try to put something on the line. Uh, Thursday's rest again, so now we're resting. Fridays, typically in this league, you play two games a week. Uh, so it's, I found a lot of games last year were Fridays and Sundays. So Fridays, either uh, it's either a game or it's a light practice. Uh, that might just be a 45-minute in and out kind of rehearsal. 
uh, going over some systems, some tactics, our family fill in, and then get out. And Saturday we lift. So everyone's probably wondering, you lift between a game and a game. Well, again, these kids are, are 15, 14, 13. And our strength coach is Barry Butt from Premier Strength and Conditioning, who I think is one of the best in the business. And it's not about getting them on a bar. It's about teaching them how to walk. About teaching them how to recover. About teach them how to get rid of the lactic acid. So it's more of a teaching tool. And we were actually fine as we started doing this more often that our Sunday games, we were a lot more uh, productive and we, we, we didn't have a, a little lag, lag in our legs that we were ready to go. And then Sunday's games. Um, and of course, on top of that, you're starting to think about the tournament. Um, it's our goal this year to try to get into the John Reed the, the tournament in St. Albert. It's a, you know, it's a great tournament to get into. I don't think a Maple Leaf Athletic Club has been there. It's, I think we're dating it back about years so that was kind of something we always strive for uh the western crown we were we were in it last year so it's another great tournament that we invited to and went and did well in that tournament and again like lee said it's all about it's all about exposure uh, for these athletes getting out in front of as many people as we can so unfortunately at the elite level you have to uh put up some numbers to get in there so it's, it's all based on if you're getting invited or not um these are our providers. So this is the, I call this as a sex appeal, I guess, kind of thing, but they're the guys that help us. So Ian Gordon's our goalie coach. Uh, he's there at least once once a week, if not twice a week. Uh, once a week is provided by the club. The other one is usually a conversation that we have with our goaltending parents if they want to uh, help with, with uh, getting Ian out there another time. Our defensive skills are done through Dan Kordick. Um, our offensive skills are done through Dan Waschuk, through competitive thread. Those guys, again, they're, they're there twice a month. So they're there, you know, on a Tuesday, usually on that skills week kind of thing. They're there uh, bringing their own uh, inventory and in, what they want to work on. And then it's, it's a conversation that we have as a staff with, with those guys. Is They want to see our lesson plan. They, see what, they want to see what we're working on. They'll come out the first couple of times and they'll work with that, but then they might come back and say, hey guys, we got to kill this back or we got to add this up and get this, um, get them doing this. We send them some game tape so they get to see our athletes in in, in battle and they'll, they'll get to see something too as well. And then something new that we brought into the club this year is uh, is the mental coach. So Jason, we wore through, uh, I think it's big league coaching, uh, big picture coaching, sorry. Um, and Jason coached at the Maple Leaf Athletic Club uh, and he was a he was a youth pastor, um, and now he's a, I think he's a golf pro, and he's an assistant coach at, at Bonneville. So he's a great resource, and he's just awesome at at getting our mindset right. He was such a big guy to have around through this really bad time through the pandemic. He's going to stick, and he's going to be part of our program for uh, moving forward. And again, the mental side of it, um, like hockey, Edmonton has it's a pillar. It is it's very important. We. It, it's it's everything. The game is played so much between their ears as much on the ice, but I think almost as they go through this grind of the elite level hockey, having a mental coach is, is a valuable asset for every club, and we all have it now, so it's good. And then, like I mentioned, we have uh, our strength and conditioning coach, Barry Butt, through Premier Strength and Conditioning, and he's kind of our everything. He's our, he's our sleep guy. He's our eating guy. He's our strength guy, so he talks about the even your cell phone about how you should have that thing turned off an hour before and, and that ties into sleeping habits. So he does, I think he does two, uh, two zoom calls just on that. And then he talks about sleep and the nutrition and, you know, the, the importance or non-importance of, of supplements. Um, everyone's always wants to get bigger and stronger, faster. He's a great guy to have as a resource for that, to try and try and teach them how to, what supplements to take if they want to take. Um, and then we do have trainers at all of our practices. They're at all of our practices and all of our games. And then we just created a really good partnership with uh, Pursuit of Motion Physiotherapy. So there, I mean, you, we have an athlete that's hurt. We had one this year for her. We got her on a Friday, I think. Uh, and he was in to see someone Saturday morning and back on the ice by Monday, Monday evening. So kind of a, you know, if you call and you're from MLAC, it's it, you're right, right to the front. Uh, they're not going to push you up for a week. So. We just established that relationship this year, and uh, it's worked out very, very well for us as a team and as a club. And then lastly, uh, most importantly, I think, again, I'm, I'm a team-building guy, and, and uh, 
we want these kids being really good dudes and we want them being able to be going out there and volunteering. Our biggest fundraiser that we do, but also volunteerism thing that we do is the paint game. I think we played Lee last year in this uh, at St. Albert. Um, so it's a game that we, you know, we wear pink jerseys and we do a ton of uh, um, educating on the, on cancer. Uh, we, we do some fundraising. We have a, each team gets a kid that we sponsor it. And they they come out and the games kind of played for them. Um, we do lots of volunteering, so we volunteer at the Edmonton Food Bank there. That's our guys there this year, or that's probably last year. Sorry, uh, out there at the Edmonton Food Bank, uh, Santa's anonymous, uh, so we're wrapping presents, uh, we're handing out presents. Uh, we do we do it all for them. Something we started this year is I call them snow angels. Uh, so if we were to get you know four feet of snow. Um, it's a quick text in the group chat to everyone, you know, grab a shovel, go shovel a couple of driveways um, in, in your neighborhood. Um, and then lastly, it's uh, it, we, uh, we cook breakfast and serve breakfast for the homeless on a Sunday morning um, out of a church uh, in, in downtown Edmonton. So talk about being comfortable when you're uncomfortable, being uncomfortable when you're comfortable. Um, I was part of that twice last year and uh it's 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 a big awareness to see how lucky actually we do have it uh the kids enjoyed it uh it's a full host you get about 60 to 70 people in a really small room and you got to make sure that the toast is uh cooked pretty well that day you can't have any burnt toast or you have to come up dead people and then uh lastly is the ladies auxiliary so that's something different there's a picture of me and donnie giving herring a picture there from last year uh they do player of the month awards um, so each, each month the player gets, you know, voted on by the coaching staff. Uh, they get a you know, muscle shirt there so they can wear it to the, to the lift sessions. And then they get a $50, uh, gift card, uh, to one of our sponsors, usually Boston pizza. Um, so that's, that's a cool initiative that they do. And then on the bus there, you see us with some sandwiches in our hands and brown bags. I don't know if you can see that. I think some of the pictures are over top of it, but that's what the lady auxiliary do for, uh, your road trip. So when you're about to take off off on the bus, uh, they show up with brown bags. Uh, you got a nice ham sandwich in there that's you know cooked with some love, and then you got some you know fruit and vegetables and a couple of bags of chips or something like that. So it's just something. Uh, the club's very unique that way that they're they're hands on. I mean, you can see the alumni there in the corner. I think the average age is about. I'm going to go light on them. I'm going to say 57, but I'm exaggerating. But uh, those guys have been there. For, from the start and they're hands-on and they are at our games and they they'll slap you in the head if you're not doing well and they'll they'll give you a high five if you are doing well and these guys care and uh and they, and they love our boys and they you know they're very supportive of us as coaches and you know there's some guys in there have coached for a long time they've been around running the league there's cops in there there's fire fire guys there's doctors there's all all, all walks of life and when we do our kickoff in the summer, I mean, these guys come and they cook you a good old style Ukrainian meal and, you know, the babas are in the kitchen cooking and these guys are out serving and, and, uh, you know, they want to get to know you as a coach. They want to get to know the families. They want to get to know the players. So kind of the culture that we have that we're you know trying to bring, like I said, the legacy back to the press, but it's about the culture. And when you see these old guys still giving her and, and passionate and, and they'll remember your name. Like they'll remember Jack if they met him in September. They'll remember it in March. So they're still sharp. And, and they, you know, one day we'll win a championship for them. And it'll be these you know, 20 of them, I think, there that we will be celebrating with us. So it's, it's, it's a really cool, really cool thing we got going. And we're trying to keep it going uh, up. And then lastly, this is, this is it. This is the club. That's the Maple Leaf Athletic Club. Um, so it's kind of unique. We've got our own clubhouse, uh, a little bit like CHE, I guess. But, um, inside here, that's our spin bikes. You can see a couple of pictures, uh, uh, pictures of our spin bikes. Um, we do our video in there. Again, I don't do a ton of video video. We use Instat just like everyone else in the league does. Um, it's good to send out to the players for, you know, average ice time spots and stuff like that. I don't spend a lot of time on that. I do more of my time, like I said earlier, on video of practice. Um, I like to use it as a teaching tool, not as a punishment tool. I and mean, a lot of times when you watch video, it's you're seeing yourself doing something wrong and the goal's being scored on you or something like that. Lee used a lot of, he should probably buy me a beer for all the all the video I supplied him for his video there with white getting scored on by moving red. But uh, um, 
we we can use this. We have we've had sleepovers up here. Like you can come in here and team building events. Um, and then the boardroom here is where the boys got their masks on and up their gear. All of our gear is there. All our gloves, our our, our bags, our shells, our our buckets, cages, uh, sticks. We have a sticks. Uh, we have a stick budget with our team. So everything's right there. So when they when the kids make the team, you know they come in there and they pick up their their gear. If they need something, it's a quick rip over and Dan opens the door and and we can uh, you know we can find them what they need. And the parents tend to sit in that clubhouse. It's open when practice is going on. So instead of going home or going shopping or going and spending four bucks on a Starbucks, they can go inside the clubhouse and and grab a coffee and watch the Oilers on TV and then pick up their kid as soon as practice is over. So. That's it. I kind of spit through that a little bit. So hopefully it wasn't too fast, but that's what we have to offer at the MLAC. And uh, I think it, 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 it's, 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 it's a legacy. I think we're, we've got some really good years coming up. Our boundaries have expanded a little bit. So thanks to that, we've got, uh, I think our PBAAs were showing really well early. So it's going to be exciting what this, uh, what this club can do in the next three or four years. That's awesome. Well, thanks Leo. Um, certainly when I get out to watch your team, they're always, uh, competing and working hard and so that's a absolute truth when you hear about that through your presentation so thanks very much for sharing that definitely uh, appreciate that so uh last but not least uh steve iwaskew from uh, knights of columbus um thanks again steve for uh, for joining us and uh putting together a presentation and uh excited to see what uh, the squires are all about uh, thanks, Joel, and thanks, Steve, for you know putting this together and giving us an opportunity to talk to families about our program, especially those coming in. Um, I know this is a tough time of year where everybody's trying to make a decision on where they want to go, but hopefully we're able to you know give a, a nice picture about what our program is all about and give you an opportunity to see what we as coaches are like and, and to help inform your decision um, with respect to it. So um, for our presentation here, uh, we'll go through. So we have our core covenant. Um, for our team uh, and our program. Um, we let our players make their own, but for us as a staff, and so you can see a little bit about what we're about and what our program's about. Uh, then we'll talk about our staff. We'll talk about our coaching philosophy. Uh, then we'll talk about our selection criteria, give you an example of our weekly schedule and our game day routine, and then talk about the additional development options that we have for players as well with our program. So when we talk about our core covenant um, for the Squires, um, our basic principle is we want to be better and every day. And so for us, it's talking about having a growth mindset and that's in all aspects, not just on the ice, but that's in life as well. So we want to be better than we were yesterday. So that's learning new opportunities, learning new things and incorporating them into what we do every day. Uh, so what it means by being better, or what our core principles are as part of being better is we want to be honest. Our word means everything. So that means when you're talking, no matter who you're talking to, you're being honest. Um, the next one is earning everything, working hard, doing your job. So I'm somebody who works very hard with what I do. I like to do that. I like to earn everything. And with our program, we want that as well. Uh, we talk openly, communication's key. Um, that's across all aspects of our program. I'm probably one of the most open coaches out there, um, or at least that's been my reputation, which is good. Um, and again, we're always willing to talk, players, parents, anything. That's part of who we are as a program. Um, parents are investing quite a bit into our program. And so for us, we want to give them that access um, as well as our players. I'm talking to them. I mean, we look at you guys as shareholders and that's part of the business, right? Um, then we talk about team first. So family means everything. So that's on the ice, at the rink, as well as off the ice. So family is your number one priority. Uh, embrace the competition, the will to win, always compete. So I'm cut from a bit of the same cloth as Leo for us. We always want to compete. Uh, we like to incorporate as much competition into everything. Like doesn't matter whether it's a simple drill in practice, we'll have little competitions with keeping score and giving guys opportunity to compete. These guys are high level athletes uh, when they come into our program. And so for us, they do have a natural, comp like a natural competitor streak. And so for us, we want to find ways for them to compete, to get the most out of them. And then realizing the fun, uh, enjoying every moment, be passionate about what you do. Uh, so that's our better concept. And fun's the most important thing. We want to make sure that you're out there, you're having a good time, you're enjoying it. Because if you're enjoying it, you want to keep doing it. And when you want to keep doing it, you're going to get better. Uh, and then so the three kind of statements that go along with that is trying new things. Failure's a lesson that goes along with our growth mindset. Um, learning, having new opportunities to build um, through failure and through learning from that. 
uh, do everything you can to make the team proud. So that means, you know, doing your everything to make sure that you're being a good person, both at the rink and outside the rink. And then yesterday's history, today's a new chance to compete. So for us, we talk to our players a lot about um, recoverability and reboundability with their mental state. And so then, you know, today's a new chance. You go out there, you start to compete again. And it gives you an opportunity to build on that. So this is the core covenant for our program. Uh, our staff, so uh, myself, Steve Wosky, I've been coaching club hockey now for 12 or 13 years in the city of Edmonton um, and surrounding areas. Um, I've coached at the U15 level pretty exclusively. I've also done the U16 AAA level, won a provincial championship there. That was pretty cool. Um, our assistant coaches, we have a good mix of experience and playing experience, so both coaching and playing. Um, so Jake Kolhazard played four years um, of junior hockey between the Western League and the BCHL. Uh, Tyler Pennington has been a head coach at the AAA level as well, uh, at the U16 level. And then Greg Terry has got a number of years of experience as well. Um, and the, he works really well with the kids. So Greg's been coaching longer than I have. Uh, he's done the AA level and the Federation level as well. Uh, our stats and video coach has been with us for the last two years. So we have an exclusive guy who looks after stats and video for our program. We think that's the next level um, for how you're going to coach athletes. They want to be able to see um, and they learn, they're very visual. And so for us, we talk about video and using that as a teaching tool uh, quite a bit. And then we also like to incorporate stats quite a bit uh, with our program. So we find that as part of the competitive element of players, that's something that we like to incorporate to make sure that they're, you know, they see their stats and they can compare themselves against their teammates and it fuels them and drives them to be better as they go forward. Uh, and then our trainer, Joe McTee. So Joe has been involved with Hockey Alberta quite a bit. Uh, she's been the trainer with uh, our team for the last two and a half years. Um, she's also been the trainer on the, the under 18 team for Alberta at the Canada Winter Games. So lots of good experience for Joe as a trainer, athletic therapist. Um, she's very good with the team. She's around practices and games uh, as well to making sure that we're looking after players and injury prevention. Uh, and then just a blurb that we're the reigning AMBHL, AHL North coaching staff of the year. So that was a very cool honor that we received a couple of years ago, or well, I guess the last season that we played here. So uh, for our development staff, what we have is, uh, so strength and conditioning, we have Dan Lajoie with Athletes Nation One. So Dan is a certified strength and conditioning coach. He's one of the few guys who has that certification in Canada. Um, and the big thing I like about Dan's program is they focus on body weight activities for the kids at this level. And so what that is, is they keep them away from lifting weights and, and riding spin bikes. And what they do is they focus on them learning to use their body weight with their conditioning and strength building. Um, and then as they move forward and progress with them, they teach them the proper form and technique um, when they do start lifting, when they move into, obviously, if they continue working with Dan into their U16 level. Um, for us, a big thing is keeping away from lifting weights at this level. For our guys, it's a big piece of their development and a lot of them are still going through puberty and so you don't want to mess up their physical development by lifting and that kind of stuff so we focus on making sure that we work their bodies appropriately uh, for their long-term development and to make sure that we don't do any any harm obviously with the strength and conditioning program uh, our goalie coach Evan Carrillo is with Cortex goaltending uh, so Evan is a full-time goalie coach that we have on our staff um, we do weekly sessions with Evan uh, with our goalies and then he's also at practice uh, consistently uh, to be able to work with our goalies as well. We think that goalie development is really important piece and making sure that we're using a guy who's there and is part of the staff as opposed to just a consultant is very important for goaltending. Uh, and then our skills coach is Mike Hardy with the Dangler Academy. So Mike has played professional hockey at multiple levels um, and he's also, you know, he's doing a lot of good things in terms of skill development with, um, with grassroots and moving up into the elite competitor stream. So I like his approach. Um, I've seen a lot of skills coaches out there where they just blow the whistle and they run drills and, you know, the kids don't really develop or build a lot out of it. And so with Mike, he really focuses on taking the time to make sure that the kids are learning and developing uh, on the skills front. Uh, our coaching philosophy. So what we do is uh, we have a development focus with our program, which I'm sure most guys do. Um, we're very habit focused though. Um, so we control what we can control. Um, so we focus on the habits within the game, really breaking down skills and breaking down the game uh, into habits to making sure that players are putting themselves in the best position to succeed. Um, what we do is with our program is we really get to know our athletes. We give them, and that's on the ice and off the ice. 
And so for us, we want our players to fill roles as opposed to being forced into one. It's not our job to pigeonhole players at 15 or 14 to come in and say, okay, you're going to be this type of player as your hockey career goes on. We focus on the athletes developing themselves into a role and building that. And then we place them kind of like a chessboard um, with our team to allow them to really get the most out of it, as opposed to, you know, just pigeonholing them as some coaches will do as they get further along. Uh, the other thing that we do is we focus on constant communication with the players and parents if necessary. So we like to have talking to athletes first and building their life skills of being able to talk to adults. Um, a lot of them are going to start getting jobs and starting to build into that next phase as they grow. And so for us, we really want to be in a comfortable environment with them, teaching them the ability to talk to adults and to make sure that they develop that life skill. Uh, we're always willing to talk to parents as well, if that's something to help supplement that. But again, we talk to our players first to help them with that life skill. Uh, as far as our season plan goes, um, we split it into three phases. So basically they kind of fit about 10 games each before we get into the playoffs. So we have the learning phase at the beginning of the year. The players are getting to know us as much as we're getting to know them. And so we focus on learning and developing or sorry, learning as a group um, about each other and about the skills and strengths that we have within our program. We do a lot of homework on our players as well, talking to previous coaches and, and previous parents that we know within the program to try and get to know them a little bit um, as well, uh, to make sure that we're, you know, understanding them properly and making sure that we're not, uh, you know, getting the wrong feel for them or the wrong read. Uh, so we do that. We do a lot of team building at the start of the year and goal setting with our players as well, uh, both in the individual and the team phase. So that's part of the learning phase and they're learning from us in terms of who we are as coaches, in terms of our expectations, in terms of our structure. And then with our systems at the learning phase, a lot of that is, is we're finding out what we have with the team. We have our general kind of structure that we have for our systems, but what we'll do is we really tailor our systems every year around our players, as opposed to trying to, to force them to play hockey a specific way. Uh, and the second phase of the year is the developing phase. So this is now we've gotten to know each other. Uh, we have a pretty good feel for things. So now we can start to develop and, and build with that. And for us, that's, you know, finding like helping the kids find their roles within the program and, you know, where they're going to be as in terms of players during the season, um, as well as their individual personal development off the ice as well. Uh, and then that's part of their goal setting as well. And, and the, the stuff that we work on with them for that as well. Uh, and then the last phase is the mastering phase. So this is, we're all pretty confident in what we're doing. Um, we've learned about each other. We've developed the, the, the um, within the structure and making sure that we're able to develop both on and off the ice. And then we really focus on mastering that and gearing up towards the end of the season for playoffs. So uh, our selection criteria for our players. Um, so it's a lot of text on the, on the slide. So I apologize for that. I'll just kind of go over the key concepts of each. Um, so we have separate um, kind of things that we look at with players and we ask the questions um, within our staff. So for a player, we look at skating. Number one, as Leo mentioned, skating is the most important aspect of the game. Uh, today, you got to be able to skate to play at a high level. So for us, we talk about skating with speed and agility, good balance and mobility, able to transition. Uh, can you attack seams or do you play on the perimeter? Uh, do you play the tight gap for defensemen and then are you first to pucks? Um, then tactical skills and hockey sense is the next thing that we look at for players. Can you read the play? Are you able to adapt on the ice? Can you support the puck effectively? Do you know when to attack? Do you know when to container support? And can you make effective plays with the puck? For goalies, we focus on movement and positioning. So can you move with speed and in control? Do you have good positioning in the net? Are you able to move laterally and vertically? And are you able to control the crease? And then we talk about anticipation and puck control. So are you able to read the play? Can you control rebounds? Can you handle the pucks effectively? And can you absorb pucks? Then when we talk about players on our team overall, we have this, these two things as kind of non-negotiables. These are the things that we really focus on with players and when we're building our team. So we want guys who have a good work ethic, they compete, they're disciplined. So do you engage in battles and can you win them? Can you use your body effectively? Do you always play the best of your ability and can you maintain a high level of discipline? And then we talk about character both on and off the ice, or are you a team player, are you a good person, are you coachable? And then we look at guys that have a growth mindset and want to improve because we want to work with guys who have that growth mindset and want to continue to improve themselves because we find that those are the types of kids that we're really able to get the most out of um, when we're working with them during the season. So here's an example of our weekly schedule. Um, we're fortunate in that we have our own rank at KC, which is a pretty 
big benefit of the program. So we're able to set our ice slots and we have the office and kind of the video rooms available there to be able to be used as well. So we can incorporate quite a few things into our program to make it all encompassing. So on Monday nights, we do a 90 minute dry land session uh, with Dan Lajoie, as I mentioned, for strength and conditioning. On Tuesday, we do team video. So this is, we're at the beginning of the year, we focus on NHL um, clips to help the boys see, you know, pro players doing the same things that we're going to be working on with our team to help teach them. Um, and then we do a 75 minute practice where we do individual skills and tactics. Uh, the reason we do team video on a night and then individual skills and tactics after is to give them a chance to process the team video as opposed to, you know, taking the video and trying to incorporate it right into a skill right after. We find that that's something that, you know, isn't, isn't productive and you tend to overload them a little bit, as well as trying to go over the 30 minute session. We try and keep them quick so we keep the kids engaged and with their attention span as well, uh, making sure that we're able to get the most out of the sessions. On Wednesday night, every week, we have a goalie development session uh, and a skill session. So our players will take two thirds of the rink with our skill development coach. Um, and we'll typically, in a, a perfect year, we usually bring out affiliate goaltenders as well so that our players are shooting on goalies and not shooter tutors. And then uh, our goalies have a goalie session with Evan where they work on basically about a third of the rink they get. And then they're working on uh, you know a session for 60 minutes as well. So it's good for their goalie development as well and, and our players to be able to develop their skills. On a Thursday, we uh, usually have a 30 minute individual video session. So this doesn't start at the beginning of the year. We wait until we get um, clips for the players with the Instat platform that we use. And then what we do is we have the players cut clips themselves um, within the platform and bring them to the sessions. Um, our coaching staff has clips uh, as a backup as well to be able to work on some things, both positive and negative. We find that, as Leo mentioned, if you're typically just focusing on the negative, um, the players will not get a lot out of it and you're not really building their confidence in that scenario. So for us, we want to try and do everything we can to build that confidence within them. So what we'll do is we'll focus on things that they've done right within the structure and within what we're working on, as well as things that they need to work on. So it's more of a, you know, a, a feedback model where we try and focus on providing positive feedback as well as negative feedback in a proper ratio to make sure that the players are able to get that, um, the proper feedback. Then typically we'll do a team tactics or game planning practice after that, um, where we're working on stuff for both the team and for the weekend ahead. Um, then on Friday night, we have an off night. Uh, we're focused on rest and recovery there, allowing our players, if they're, they need some time to catch up on their schoolwork, um, then that's part of the time for that as well, um, along with the rest of the week as well. Uh, and then Saturday and Sundays are typically game days for us. Um, within the league, we usually play on weekends. Um, for our program, my mom was a, an educator, so she's a, a, an elementary school teacher. And so for us, education is a big piece as well that we focus on and making sure like our players sign a contract at the start of every season with a list of team roles. Um, they like to joke about if they're getting a signing bonus, but for us, we just typically sign the contract with them. Um, and so what we'll do is um, the first rule in, is school is more important than hockey. So. Our players are expected to maintain satisfactory grades by their parents. So we allow our parents to establish the grades that they expect for their players. Um, it's more of an informal, it's not, they have to have a, a B average or an A average or a C average or whatever. But we find that if we were to, like, to have the parents establish the expectations for that um, really allows us to you know, get the buy-in with the players um, from a second set saying, hey, how are you doing at school? How's things going with the grades? Um, because I mean, as much as every parent on our team would like their kids to cash a paycheck playing hockey, a lot of them obviously aren't going to be doing that. Right. So we really focus on education and that's a big piece of our program, making sure that our kids are, are doing that. And so we do give them time to be able to do that, um, as part of the program. So, um, so that's our weekly schedule, um, our game day routine. So what we have is we have a countback clock that we use with our players. Our coaching staff all uses game cards, which I'm sure is pretty typical in the league. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, we have a lot of stats that we put together for our players um, to be able to show them, you know, here's where your stats are and allow them to really see it in, you know, black and white. Here's how they're performing as well. And so if they feel like they're not performing well, then we'll sit and we'll meet with them and discuss um, opportunities and ways for them to do better. Um, if they feel like they're doing great, then, you know, we really focus on making sure that they don't get too high on too high on their horses by, you know, constantly challenging them and giving them new things to continue their development. 
Um, and for us, it's really important that we don't do a one size fit all model. We find the athlete and what makes them tick. And then we take the time to make sure that we coach them appropriately for them to help with their development and to maximize what they get out of it. Um, so for additional player development, what we do with our program. So um, at the start of each year, we do a team identity and goal setting session. So we do this both, uh, well, I guess with the next point. So at the start of the season, and then we check in three times per year. So after each third of the season, we check in on our team identity and goal setting to see how we're doing and as a check in for the players. Uh, individual goal setting. So we allow our players to determine what they're getting out of the season and what they want to build and work on and develop. And part of that is, is like every player says, well, I want to score 50 goals or I want to have 100 points or I want to have, you know, a face-off percentage or whatever. But what we do with them is we focus on what they can control. Um, they can't go out and if the puck hits a goal post or if they're against the guy who's a really good centerman or whatever, we really make sure that we focus on the controllables for them uh, with their goal setting. So things that they can control in their individual development. Uh, and then we also check on that, uh, check in with them three times a year. So after every 10 games, we do a check in, see how their goals are doing. If there's anything they want to add or take away from the goals as well to continue with their development throughout the season. Uh, we do dedicate a nutrition, hydration and recovery sessions uh, twice per season. So we do that at the start of the year and before playoffs. So we want to teach our players as part of their development. It's putting good things into their body and making sure that they're taking the time to rest and recover as well. Um, especially with a lot of athletes we're starting to see nowadays that they're getting a lot of fatigue injuries at this level, um, which are things that, you know, you haven't seen in the past. And a lot of that is overuse. And so for us, we want to make sure that we're ensuring that they put themselves in the best position to succeed and with their nutrition, hydration and recovery to make sure that that's important. Um, and what we do is we do mental performance sessions as well with our players uh, three times a season and then more if on an, an individual basis they need this. Uh, so we use Barry Midori with Hockey Alberta this year um, to do our mental performance sessions. Um, what we do with them is we focus on resiliency, mental toughness and rebound ability. Um, at this age, confidence and self-confidence is a really big thing. The kids are really just starting to develop coping mechanisms at this age. And so for us, we want to try and train them and help them with that, that, you know, no matter how good you are, there's always going to be stuff that doesn't go well. And so how do you rebound from that and how do you move forward? and to make sure that they can put themselves in the best position to succeed both on the ice and off the ice with respect to that. Um, and then the last thing we do, which we added this year as well, is a scouting and draft information session. So what we do is uh, we bring in a, an actual WHL scout to our players to talk to them. Um, he's a guy that I know from you know my years around the rink and his kid played for me a few years ago, which was a nice connection. Um, and he's a pretty honest guy. So he comes in and he'll tell the kids, you know, these are the things the scouts are looking for. These are the things that they focus on, things that, you know, they want to make sure the kids are doing properly. And then to provide information, here's how the process works. Here's how the next steps are going to go um, to, you know, give them the opportunity to put themselves in the best position to succeed as well. Uh, for technical development, so we do team video sessions. Um, so we start with NHL clips and then go to team clips. Uh, we do individual video sessions starting usually after about the first six games. So weekly sessions. So we'll pick one or two players a week um, and rotate through them throughout the season uh, where we work on analyzing their game individually um, with the Instat program, which is the next point. So the Instat subscription provides the players with access to their video pre-clipped um, as well as any NHL team clips. So we find um, a lot of benefit with this system and it, it was a great move by the AHL to add this to the, the platform for coaches. Um, I mean, it's, it helps us too as coaches because we don't have to sit there on a Monday night till midnight clip and video, but um, it's great to, you know, we send it off and in 24 hours, they've got clip video for the, the, the team. And it basically breaks down every shift of the players and every, you know, different point of the game, right? Like, I mean, whether it's a face-off, whether it's an entry, whether it's a breakout, whether it's a shot on goal, whether it's a goal and it's a, what, any of that kind of stuff, it breaks it down. So, we find that it's a great system. And the part that I really like is it allows the players to have pre-clipped video of NHL players. And so when we do do uh, individual video sessions, we do also incorporate stuff where we'll allow players to, you know, say, hey, what type of NHL player do you see yourself as or the most similar to you? And then we'll allow them to cut video and bring it into their individual video sessions as well to talk about, okay, here's why I think I'm like player X. And then a lot of things. So then we can also work with them. Okay. So if that's the things that you see in the strength in your game, similar to player X. Okay. So let's work on that. 
and to help you strengthen your game as well. And if there's things that you don't see yourself being as good in that situation, then those are the things that we can identify and work on as well with the players for their development. Um, and then the last thing is the stats package. So this is something that I mentioned before. I think it's really important when you talk about players are very competitive. And I find that if you're focusing on goals and assists, I think you're looking at the wrong stats when you talk about a player and their success rate um, in hockey. Um, I'm a big believer in that. I think goals and assists isn't a true indicator of a player's performance. And so what we do is we incorporate a number of other stats um, that we call key. Um, and what we do is we'll work with the team at the beginning of the year where they'll establish stats as a team that they want to achieve on a team basis. And then for, so for goals for the game, and then we check in on how we did with our goals um, by period and then after each game. And then we also talk about key stats for each player and things that are important for their game, as well as obviously our coaching staff has a few that if they miss them, we just make sure that we add them in so that they can see. And I find that with adding those additional stats for the players, they can see their performance and continue to develop. And if there's things that they're doing great, great. And if there's things that you need to work on, then it, it's there for them to, to look at and analyze as well. And we talk about life skills development as the last pillar. Um, so for us, life skills are really important with our players. Um, I'm a big believer in developing our players both on and off the ice, um, which I'm sure all the coaches here are as well. Um, but for us, what we do is, um, so we do hockey leadership. So as Mark mentioned, we do a similar program where we partner with a younger team uh, for players to provide mentorship to younger teams in the organization. This year, unfortunately, with COVID, obviously we weren't able to do it. Um, but what we'll do is we'll go out and we practice with another team. So we'll split the ice half, half and mix players from our team in with their team. And I find that it's great for both the players and obviously us as coaches as well to help, you know, mentor coaches within our program as well with respect to that. And it gives the players the opportunity where they're able to, you know, they take a kid who looks up to them and idolizes them. They don't really realize it yet. And so it helps them both to understand the impact that they can have on a younger player and also, you know, that they have to set a standard and be that type, like be a role model for those players as well. So we'll practice with them with one of their slots and they come out to one of our slots as well. And then what we do, which I've found is one of the really cool things is we'll go out to one of their games and we have players make signs up and, you know, there's a cheering section for the kids, the younger guys. And it's, we give them big league experience with the cheering section um, for one of their games. And so we found that it's been really cool and they've enjoyed it. And then obviously we invite them to our game as well. Um, and they come out and then it's a cheering section for our guys as well. Um, on the community leadership side and engagement, um, we volunteer with charitable organizations during the Christmas season, as most of the other teams do as well. Um, we've done uh, uh, the food bank where we've prepared meals, uh, Boyle Street. Uh, we've wrapped Christmas presents at Youth Empowerment and Sports Services. Um, we've done Santa's Anonymous and lots of other things like that as well um, over the years. And then um, one thing that we did uh, last year with our team, and obviously during COVID we couldn't do it, is, is we tell each player to pick a charitable initiative um, that's important to them and meaningful to them. Um, every player is different. And if we tell them, here's the one organization you're going to support, some guys they buy into it, some guys they struggle with it a little bit. And so we get each guy to pick a charitable organization that's important to them. And then we ask them during the season to contribute to that organization in a, in a meaningful way. And that's not just a financial commitment that's going to, and actually giving their time to an organization that's important. So we've had lots of guys where they've raised money for uh, charities. We've had guys that have gone out and volunteered. We've had guys do lots of different things. And I think it's really important thing and to help, you know, teach these guys that they are very fortunate as, uh, you know, young athletes to be able to play this game. Hockey is not a cheap game. Um, and so for them, they are fairly fortunate and to see some of the less fortunate out there and to be able to give back and to also understand life lessons around, you know, if they make some bad decisions in their life and kind of the road that they might end up heading down. Right. And so we give them that and a, and a bit of a peek into it as well. Um, one of the things that we did this year, and I just, the picture over here on the right is during COVID, we, we were trying to really struggling with trying to figure out what to do with our team this year and to around the Christmas season. And so we're really proud of it. Um, our guys uh, partnered up with a seniors home here in Edmonton in our draw zone. Um, and so what they did was they did a Christmas card and letter writing campaign. So we set them up with pen pals. So each guy was matched up with the senior in the home. Um, and then they wrote uh, two letters each back 
and forth to one another. So one letter before Christmas, we wrote to them with a little hockey card here and a little treat. Uh, the seniors wrote back to us before Christmas, um, just, you know, talking about introducing themselves and talking about their plans and Christmas activities that they're going to be engaged in with family or as much as it could be, obviously, with uh, with COVID. And then after Christmas, we wrote a second letter back, you know, checking in, just saying, hey, how was Christmas? Did you enjoy it? And all that kind of stuff. And we sent them a little bit of swag, as the boys like to call it, but we sent them a, a scarf of our team um, for them to be able to, you know, so they could... Uh, feel pride in, in being connected with our boys as well. And, and then they sent letters back. And then a few of our kids have actually continued that uh, letter writing back and forth with the seniors, which we're pretty proud of um, as a staff. I know with COVID and with people at home, sometimes they don't have a lot of people to talk to. So it's nice for them to, to have something to look forward to there. So that was part of our charitable, charitable initiatives this year, community leadership. And then the last thing that Leo mentioned, and you know, thanks for the shout out, Leo, but team building is really important for me. Um, it's one of the most important aspects of our program. Um, we find that, you know, if a team is strong um, as a group and as a family, then you're going to get the most out of everybody and you're going to see the most amount of success. And so for us, we do team building events constantly. So as part of our pregame routine, we have a team building activities, a little game at the rink, because when the kids get to the rink, they're typically just sitting around. And so we have... Uh, we find ways to keep them active at the rink and making sure that they're getting prepared and we don't waste any time then that way. So every minute of our program is designed or as much as we can be, obviously, um, to see what what's the purpose and what you can get out of it and trying to build the team. So we'll play little team building games quite often. We do a lot of team building activities. Um, so we do some stuff around cooking skills. So we teach guys, you know, we do a little chili cook off a couple times a year where the boys will, will cook chili. They'll take a recipe and put the stuff together. And then we go out and play a little bit of shinny while it's cooking in slow cookers. And we come back and there's a little competition as to who has the best chili. And um, it's a good opportunity for the guys to develop some life skills as part of that. Um, it also develops their communication skills. So we split them up. We do different groups in terms of sizes. So we'll do full team, team building activities. We'll do half team. We'll do groups of four, groups of three, groups of two. And it helps them to, you know, mix in with their teammates in different forms. And, and so then... You know, it helps build a comfort factor around them with their teammates as well as around us and then also helps them develop, you know, their communication skills and their teamwork at, um, both on and off the ice that way. So, so that's our program in a nutshell. I kind of went fast, but when you're the fourth guy and last guy to present, you want to try and, you know, make sure people stay awake during the presentation. Um, so as part of my commitment to communication, here's my email address and phone number if anybody has any questions at all feel free to reach out to me um, about our program or anything that we can do to, to, you know, inform me a little bit better if you have any questions about the presentation. Um, but I want to thank Hockey Edmonton for allowing us to, you know, come into your homes and to talk to you guys. And thank you on a Friday night for coming out and um, being a part of the presentation. Thank you. Awesome, Steve. That's, uh, thanks so much for that. I really appreciate it. And, uh, I think uh, I think for tonight we'll uh, unless there's something really pressing from people we'll uh, we'll maybe just postpone a bit of the questions. Um, uh, a lot of the coaches, obviously, like Steve has made themselves available to to answering any of those questions. Um, and I know you can find their contact information either through the club or on their website with the club. And if you have trouble finding it, you can uh, um, just contact me, and I'll put you in touch with the the right coach with uh, within your area. So. Uh, I think from from us just to close out from hockey Edmonton, it's, it's pretty obvious to see the passion and the pride that these four coaches uh, put into their programming. Um, I think uh, any player that uh, gets chosen to one of these teams is pretty lucky to um, have uh, have any of these four guys as as one of the coaches. And I think from from our perspective at hockey Edmonton, we just want everybody to understand that um, this is a great place to play, whether you're at. Uh, CAC, MLAC, KC, Southside, it doesn't matter. Um, and I think with the programming and the level of coaching that we have here, uh, we understand and recognize this is a prime um, age group for uh, players to make choices. And um, again, from us, we just wanted to show uh, the options that we have for players that are out there. And uh, it's an amazing place to play. So if you can, and if you want, stay home and uh, you'll get a lot out of it uh, um, within Edmonton. Um, 
Again, I want to say thank you to the clubs, uh, Hockey Edmonton staff, and then the EHMC for working together on this project. Um, again, this is our third one, and I think it was awesome uh, and really well done by the coaches. Um, in combination with these programming and some of the skills academies that are at FX or at Vimy, um, I, I really don't see any, any better choice or better option for players that are out there. Um, so again, uh, just encourage everybody to do their research and, uh, and, and just um, understand what these coaches can offer for you. So uh, the other support that we provide to the coaches is a mentorship program that will start next year. Uh, the elite edu education policy that no um, association has within Canada, um, which is a mandatory education package for our assistants. Um, and the frameworks that we've built that we started to uh, started this presentation with, they will be released in, in April um, so that families can um, see those as well, too. So I think from us, thanks so much for coming. Um, if you have some specific questions, we're happy to forward to them after the event. Uh, this will be posted in coming weeks, so you can come back to it again if, if you wish. Uh, thank you, coaches. Thank you, athletic clubs. And, and thank you, everybody, for, for joining us tonight.